Recall, our goal is to apply the rules of logic to construct new mathematical statements from old ones. We've already seen negation, conjunction, disjunction, and implication. We've also seen how to use a truth table. For here, we're going to consider further constructions. So for our next construction, we have tautology. So tautology is going to be a compound statement that's always true. So in the truth table of a tautology, the final column will be all t's. Now, for an example, let's consider a implies a. So if a, then a. We set up the truth table, so the values for a can be either true or false. And if we consider what's happening with a implies a, okay, what we have either a true statement implying a true statement, that's a true statement, or false statement implies a false statement, and again, that's a true statement. So you see here, we have all trues in this last column, so that's a tautology. For another example, let's consider, okay, we had exclusive or in the last part. So recall, if I have A exclusive or B, that means exactly one of A or B is true. Now, we could use this to set up the law of the excluded middle. So this is going to be the statement, A exclusive or not A. And the result is that this is a tautology. So let's see that first. If we set up the truth table, so A can be true or false, then not A is false or true. Then if we apply exclusive or, we have exactly one of our statements true. So we're going to have true for each entry in our last column. So that means, okay, this statement here is a tautology. Now, what does this mean? If we're considering statements that have either values of true or false, then we must have exactly one of A or not A true. Now, this is a feature of Boolean logic. Okay, this is where our statements are either true or false. There can be other forms of logic where we don't have this. So where there's a third option between true or false. For another construction, we have contradiction. A compound statement will be a contradiction if all of its values are false. Now, this is the opposite of a tautology. So if I want to construct a contradiction, I could take any tautology, take its negation then we get a contradiction. And that works in the other direction too. The negation of any contradiction gives us a tautology. We move away from constructions now. Consider when two statements are the same. So this is what we call logical equivalence. So I'll say that A and B are logically equivalent if A by conditional B is a tautology. So recall, for A by conditional B to be true, just means A and B are either true or false together. Now, that just means A and B are logically equivalent if they have the same values in their truth table. So for an example, let's show that the negation of the negation of A is logically equivalent to A itself. So that's what we call double negation. There are two ways to show this. So I can either show that the statement negation of negation A by conditional A is a tautology, okay, so always true, or we could just show that negation, negation A, and A have the same values in their truth table. So let's work that out. So I'll start with A, which is true or false. We take the negation, we get false and true, if I take negation of the negation of A, we're going to have true and false. So if I go with the second method, I compare this column with this column. Okay, this is a column for A. And we see that the truth table has the same values. So that means these are going to be logically equivalent. If we go one more step and compute okay, negation of negation A by conditional A, what do we do? We compare the values. If they're both true, we get a true. If they're both false, we get a true. 
If they're different, we get a false. So here I have true, true, gives a true. Here I have false, false, gives a true. So we see that we have a tautology for this statement here. Now, what's the philosophy behind logical equivalence? If we have two statements that are logically equivalent, then they yield the same truth table. In the other direction, if we're given a truth table, then logical equivalence is going to measure the redundancy in the statements that yield that truth table. Now, redundancy is not a bad thing here. When we work with proofs, we'll often come across statements that are not convenient to work with. So what we can do is replace our statement with another statement that's logically equivalent, and we'll hope that that improves our situation. Now, for another example, we have De Morgan's Law for or. So we'll have a De Morgan's Law for and. It'll be the same statement, except we switch the position of or and and. So what do we have? I have not A or B is logically equivalent to not A and not B. So when we push the negation through, it switches the or to an and. Now, let's check this. So we set up our truth table. Okay, I compute A or B. So we have true whenever one of A or B is true. So we have true, 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 false. We take the negation, we get false, 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 true. If we work out not A and not B, and I'll leave that to you. We get false, 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 true. And we see that these two columns are equal, so we have logical equivalence. For another example, and this one we'll use a lot, we have the contrapositive. So if you recall, we've seen the converse of A implies B. Okay, so that would be B implies A. And we've seen that A implies B and B implies A are not logically equivalent. So they'll have different truth tables. The contrapositive is going to be the version of the converse that works. Now, for the contrapositive, if I have A implies B, that will be logically equivalent to the contrapositive statement, not B implies not A. So let's check that. We set up the truth table. Okay, so for A implies B, we'll have true in all cases except where A is true and B is false. Okay, so for implication, recall, we'll have that B is true whenever A is true. Now if I work out not B and not A, then we work out not B implies not A. We see that our truth tables are equal, so we have logical equivalence. Now, how do we think of contrapositive okay, in terms of, say, cause and effect? So this will help with intuition. If I have the statement A, I study math. B, I have no free time. Okay, so let's consider A implies B. If I study math, then I have no free time. For the converse, we have, if I have no free time, then I study math. Those are not quite the same. On the other hand, if I do the contrapositive, okay, so that would say, if I have free time, then I'm not studying math, and that will be the same as A implies B. Related to logical equivalence, we have logical implication. So here we don't insist that the truth tables be equal. We just want that whenever the first statement's true, the second statement is also true. Then I would say that A logically implies B. Okay, for shorthand, I'll use A L I B. Another way to say that is that A implies B is a tautology. Now, for the truth table, this is the same as saying, okay, we want whenever A is true, B is true. When A is false, it doesn't matter. So we can have either true or false. Now, if A and B are logically equivalent, that's the same as saying that A logically implies B, and B logically implies A. For an example, let's consider modus ponens. 
So here we have the statement, A and A implies B, and we wanna show that this logically implies B. Okay, so if we think about this, if we have that A is true, and that it's true that A implies B, then B should be true also. Now, if we set up our truth table, okay, if I take A implies B, this is true except where A is true and B is false. If we take A and A implies B, okay, we're just checking for where they're both true. So we get true, false, false, false. Now, to check using the truth table, okay, what do we want? We know that these two columns are not equal, but that's not what we're looking for. That's logical equivalence. For logical implication, I just take a look at where our first statement's true. Okay, so it's only in the first row. And then I have to check that our second statement's also true. So that happens. So our statement of logical implication is true in this case. Now, we could do more work and show the tautology, so let's do that. Now, I wanna show that this statement, okay, implies B, is always true. So we'll call this statement star. So we're gonna check this column against this column. So if I consider implication, true implies true is true. Then if I have false implying anything, the implication is always true. So we get our tautology, and again we see logical implication. One final item, we have substitution rules. These rules are gonna let us take statements with certain properties, we do a switch, and then we get another statement with the same properties. So for instance, our first case we have change of variables. So this is gonna let us turn old tautologies into new tautologies. If A is a tautology, that's constructed using statement S. We can replace statement S with another statement S prime. That'll yield a new tautology A star. A second type of substitution. Okay, this will be change using logical equivalence. If we have a compound statement A, so not necessarily a tautology, we suppose A is built using statement S. I can replace S with another statement S prime, which is logically equivalent. Then we'll get a new statement A star, which is logically equivalent to A. Now, for both of these, it's easier to see what's going on just by looking at an example. So let's first consider case one, where we do a change using a tautology. Now, let's consider modus ponens. So in that case, we have A and A implies B, implies B is a tautology. So I'm allowed to replace A with any other statement. So let's use B implies C. Then we have B implies C and B implies C implies B. Okay, quantity implies B is also a tautology. Now, that's a rule, so we could stop there, but let's actually check this. Now, I want to set up the truth table for this statement, and that's going to take some work. So let's see what happens. We have B and C. Okay, we set up different values of true and false. We have B implies C, so I have true, false, true, true. Then I'm going to want, okay, one, okay, B implies C implies B. So when I work that out, okay, we have true going to true, false goes to true is true, true goes to false, true goes to false, are both false. Then we're going to take two, consider that and one. So we're going to compare both of these columns and we want them both true to get a true out. So we get true, false, false, false. And then finally we consider this column implies B. Okay, so we're going from here to here. So if true implies true is true. And then we have all false. Okay, and for implications, false always implies whatever is a true statement. So we have a tautology as promised. The substitution rule says you don't need to do all this work. For an example of substitutions using logical equivalences, okay, we have this statement here, which we'll call P. P star is gonna be this statement down here. And I'm gonna be able to go from P to P star, step by step using logical equivalences. 
So this is going to look a lot like what we do when we write proofs. Now, my first step, by contrapositive, okay, I can replace this entire statement with its contrapositive. They're both logically equivalent. So what do we do? I take not of this statement, not of this statement, and reverse the implication. For my next move, we invoke De Morgan's Law and use the equivalence from that. So here I want to replace not of not A and B with not of not A or not B. We apply De Morgan's Law again to our second clause. So I can replace not A and B with not A or not B. Finally, I can use double negation to replace not not A with A itself. So they're logically equivalent also. So that gets us to our statement P star. Now, again, the substitution rule says you're allowed to go from here to here, and we have logical equivalence. Of course, we want to check that by checking the truth tables. So we want that the truth tables have equal values. Now, that takes a little bit of work, so I'll leave that to you. Okay, so here's my work. And for statement P, we get for the truth table values, false, true, true, true. If we go and do this for P star, okay, what we'll see when we do all our work is again, false, true, true, true. So our two statements are logically equivalent as promised.